I am Dr. Charles Argoff, and I'm a professor of neurology at Albany Medical College, where I also direct the Comprehensive Pain Center at Albany Medical Center. Understanding that small fiber neuropathy may be associated with many painful conditions uh, and the expansion of our understanding of how this entity may influence uh, our under what we do for individual patients um, is startling. Uh, many people have, typ have defined small fiber neuropathy or have thought of small fiber neuropathy in a more very, in a very narrow way, that is to say, uh, individuals presenting with just burning sensations in their legs um, that have not been associated with typical um, EMG nerve conduction findings consistent with a large fiber neuropathy. Uh, that's what EMG and nerve conduction velocity uh, studies look at. But what we, we've learned, and I say we, not only myself, but others throughout the world at, at this point, is that many conditions are associated with an abnormality of small nerve fibers. These are the nerve fibers that won't be detected in e by EMG and nerve conduction, or essentially even by routine physical examination. Um, but many painful conditions, very common ones, may be associated with small fiber changes that may, as we go forward, not only have tremendous implication with respect to diagnosis, but also with being able to understand why that person experiences pain and why and how we can help that person be treated better. So for example, approximately 50%, that's 5-0% of people who have been diagnosed with the condition fibromyalgia. When I say fibromyalgia, I mean American College of Rheumatology criteria confirmed fibromyalgia. 50% of those individuals have been demonstrated by appropriate diagnostic testing, which means skin biopsies, um, small fiber neuropathy. Uh, many people with Sjogren's syndrome, uh, sarcoidosis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, thyroid dysfunction, diabetes, um, celiac disease, uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, uh, increasingly recognized, uh, demonstrate changes consistent with small fiber neuropathy. We just, in our institution, learned that 64% of individuals who were referred to our chronic pelvic pain center, some with the diagnosis of chronic pelvic pain of uncertain etiology, some with the diagnosis of interstitial cystitis, some with overlapping diagnosis, 64% had biopsy-proven small fiber neuropathy. That's never been demonstrated before, and the prevalence of small fiber changes in the general population is one in a thousand. So just in summary, um, I think it's really it's been very exciting uh, experience learning and understanding more of the role that the diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy may have on better understanding not only a very narrow group of individuals, that small group of individuals with chronic pain, but actually perhaps even a larger group than we ever thought.